Riverside's own Diane Wheeler. Give her a big hand. Okay, I'm going to remind you there's a silent auction. There is no money involved. It's based in attendance price. If you choose to win the box, the bands of the scroll saw box, um, you may put your name in the, in the bowl and we'll pull one out at the end of the night and you can take it home with you, okay? Make a nice Christmas gift for somebody. It is handmade. Uh, it took me two weeks, so it didn't cost me a lot of money, but it took me two weeks. So if you don't want it, I have a couple of grandchildren that would love to have it. <laughs> All right. Um, most of you don't know this, but I have a master's degree in special education, and um, I'm a certified teacher. So I can make sure that you behave yourself tonight. <laughs> I taught severely disturbed teenage boys for 14 years, so oh I can hear you guys. Oh my okay. okay. When I got a new class, a student in my class, I um, didn't never got the IEP with him. Does anybody know what an IEP is? Yeah. Individual, uh, educational individual educational program. In other words, you're walking in with a blank slate. I have no idea where this kid is in education or where I'm supposed to put him. So I'd always give him a short test. And I'm going to use the uh, ed pro pronoun him because I'm used to him with my students. Um, I would give him a short test. I would assure him that it was a pretest that I did not expect them to know all the answers, but I just want them to fill it out to the best of their ability. So I would ask them, for instance, to write their name. I had one child that came in and wrote their name straight downhill. Oh. So that told me a lot right now. Uh, do you know your alphabet? It tells me whether or not they know the alphabet, if they know it in order, if they use cursive, or if they are printing, okay? Um, another thing I would do is give them a, a worksheet that went from two and two is four to uh, uh, second year algebra. And just because I had one that was a National Honor Society student, very intelligent, had, did not have any rapport with anybody. He had a social problem. Okay, so I worked with very strange people. Okay, so tonight I'm gonna to give you a little pretest. There's no grade, you can't pass or fail, you're just helping me help you. My first question is, by raising your hand, how many of you have ever used a sewing machine? Have you made something on a sewing machine? Have we ever used have a sewing machine? Have you ever sewing, in your life, have you ever used a sewing machine? Put a button on or whatever, one, two, three, four, a lot of you, most of you did. Okay, that's a good score for you. I'm going to give you at least 10 on that one. Okay, how many of you have ever used a scroll saw? What? A scroll saw. Scroll saw. A scroll saw. I figured the guy's yeah, nice. Is a scroll saw? A scroll saw. Similar to a jigsaw? Yeah, is that a jigsaw? Just a moment. Yeah, same as a jigsaw. Is it? Is this a machine? Have anybody ever used, I can't bring the machine here because basically it's too heavy, it's too messy, and it's too loud. But it looks like this. It has a little table. It's about this big, but it weighs mm -hmm. enough that it's too hard for me to carry it too far. Okay. Have anybody used it? You've got two, two people? Two, three? Usually the guys know what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm going to put three down because I think three of us have done that. Um, and uh, what is your level of ex expertise? What have you done with it? That, were you pretty good at it? Have you made some pretty advanced things or basic stuff? You're talking to the guys? The guys, the guys that said they've used it. I can't ask you, but you've never done it, right? Mm -hmm. Would you consider yeah. yourself a beginner, intermediate, or advanced? I've made some things like that. Oh. Like that, okay. So you're kind of at my level. In eighth beginner. grade. In eighth grade. <laughs> In eighth grade? Oh, see, because when we were in school, girls weren't allowed to use tools. We had to learn how to cut them. So, right? Yeah, so that's why I didn't learn until I was an adult, and I carried it out on my own. I okay. cut up like flowers and things and then painted it. Then uh -huh. it like, I didn't see you paint it. Yeah, I didn't see you paint it. I used to uh, paint on wood when I was a kid, so I guess that was a combination. Okay, a soy, a soy machine, the ladies especially know that it puts things together. Yeah. A sewing machine, a uh, scroll saw basically does the opposite. It takes things apart. You put a piece of wood on there, it'll take it apart. That's the difference between them. They're both easy to use. They're both relatively safe. Even a child can use these as long as they're thinking, okay? Um, you can use protective eye gear. You can use ear protectors. You can hear a, a dust mask if you want that extra protection on one. Um, I don't use the protective glasses or the ears because I don't think it's hard enough to worry about. It doesn't throw a lot of stuff off except dust. I do need the mask because I have asthma and it makes it worse. 
as you get as you get your uh, confidence in using one, you usually don't need those things anyway, uh, unless you you're still thinking and you're just using what you know you need. Okay, now that I know where I am, this level of what you guys do, you're kind of at my level. Um, I you'll notice that I'm some of you are well aware of the fact that I put some suckers and tootsie rolls out there for you to enjoy while you do activities for me. Because as a special ed teacher, I know you take in information through your ears, your eyes, your hands, your touch, your smell, your taste. So I'm going to let you do, use all of those activities. You're going to listen to a lot of things. You're seeing a lot of things. You're going to touch a lot of things. You're going to smell those pop, pop, popsicles and those tootsie rolls, and you're going to taste them tonight. So help yourself to them. I have more you need. I'm going to put you back in the chat. So we're going to start tonight by putting puzzles together. And some of you have already started. And if you're already frustrated with one you have, trade in another one. Some of them are pretty simple. Some of them only have seven pieces. Some of them have 15. So get a partner if you need one. There's three at each table. Everybody put a puzzle together. Everybody put a puzzle together so everybody can see what they are. Okay? Okay. Do it right now. Okay, um, while you are sitting there vegetating, I want you to think of a puzzle you could make. I want you to think of a puzzle you could make. And when they are done, either if we have time, I'll let you choose one you like the best, or I will choose the best one. I will make it and give it to you next month. Um, I also want to mention to you in Tarsa, this is a professionally made intarsa. I think mine are better, but <laughs> it's an illustration of what it is. It's simply a picture where you um, cut off sections of it, just like you would a puzzle. You stain them different colors, and then you glue it back together as a solid piece. So if you decide you want to do just a picture with an intarsa, you might tell me uh, maybe in a deep thick line where you want me to cut that, you want to cut the wings off, you want to put the head off, you want this separate, I uh, can put it together as an intarsa activity as well as a puzzle. If you want puzzles, then you know how they're made. You have to have sections that kind of go in and out to make connectors on each piece. So I'm going to give you a piece of paper and pencil and you can start with me on your own puzzle. The winner will get theirs back and possibly in some maple. I think I'm ready to move up. <laughs> this is in torso. These are things that I drew. I drew these myself. And I cut them apart. And I stained them different colors. Uh, usually you, you do this in torso with different kinds of wood, but I only have pine, so I, this is how I did it. And then I put it back together. So it's one solid piece, but it was actually cut originally as a, as a puzzle. You notice I have a lot of books up here. There are many resources to get ideas for doing it, or you can sit down and do your own. Uh, you, there's computer. If you got on a computer and said, in Tarsa, pretty Tarsa puzzles, you get them from Pinterest and different areas, and you get all kinds of things. How are you spelling that word? I N T A R S A. And it means? It's a form of puzzles. A form of puzzles, yes. You can say free scroll saw patterns. You'll get all kinds of information. It doesn't take a whole lot. The library is terrible. I wouldn't recommend going to the library. St. Louis County has nothing on scroll saws. The city of St. Louis does, but I can go to the bay and pick up the book. We might have to thank her help us with this. In case you, uh, there are some things I do want to mention. Um, in case you want to make some, a puzzle for a child and you want to paint it, just and you may need to know this, but just to remind you, it has to have AP on the back to be safe in case the child puts that puzzle in their mouth. It doesn't have any lead in it. So if you pick up paint and it doesn't have AP on it, do not put it on a child's toy. Inlays are another fun thing to do. You put two pieces of wood together. You cut out a design. I did a whale on this one. I have two different pieces of wood, hopefully two different colors. 
And then when you are done, you have one piece of this, and then you just cut this out and you stick that little piece in there. So you can bake maybe two pieces of this. And this is called an inlay, which is what I have on the box up here. So you can put it They're made out of two different kinds of wood. And they're real easy to do. We might need a clue over here. <laughs> You got it. <laughs> She's good at puzzles like that. Pat. She is very good. <laughs> we like have some puzzles. Pat. And your name on them? Almost. Okay. okay. You want to tar some? Okay, so we're going to need a leg here. Okay, I do have some people that are ready with their, most of them are in chosen tarsa, where it's, it's going to be something that you can stand up later. It's going to be an inch thick, and then you can stand it up and display it. Otherwise, the puzzle something you put in the box, and you put it in that box and play with it. Okay? What are we supposed to be doing with the paper? You're supposed to draw something and make it your own puzzle, and then I will cut out the winner and bring it to the Christmas party. <laughs> so you can have intarsa, which is uh, uh, something to display, like the nativity scene is just a display. Here's little baby Jesus in the manger. It's just a, it's just something you stand up and display, but it's cut as a puzzle originally, stained in different colors and then glued back together. That's an intarsa type puzzle. The other kind is the kind you give to your husband and say, here, put this together. <laughs> give him that one. <laughs> Oh, I'm very proud of this. I'm very proud of this little basket because I made it with this puzzle, a piece of wood that was this big, and I cut this out and I oh my gosh, and I made a basket out of it. And it's out of basket. I think it's a five and a half inch piece of uh, wood. I think it's half inch wood on this one, maybe a fourth. I don't know. But you cut this with? A scroll saw. A scroll saw. You cut it that close without cracking it. Well, I, I didn't hit. I have had a lot of problems with pine. This may not be pine. This might, might have been it's just a scrap that Bob had down It might be like, it could even be. Um, oh, it's good. Oh, okay. it's pretty good. Well, now I can see it. Whatever I had in the house, I found out that. This is made out of just a tiny scrap that I had left after I made everything else. And I took a, uh, so this is a uh, jewelry to hang a pendant on a necklace. And I put, this is a, an earring that I lost the other one. And I took that thing and I pushed it and it went straight in. I didn't have to hammer it in. Oh, that's cool. And then these are beads and this is just, oh, I made this out of a piece of scrap. So it doesn't take much to make something. Mm -hmm. You can give us a little out by health. How heavy is it? For an arm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not heavy. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cute. This is uh, one inch pine. You know, when they sell you one inch, they don't really need one inch. They start changing. <laughs> two by fours aren't two by fours. No, they're not. <laughs> Here I made a pattern. I put a quarter for a pattern of blue rose and flowers. And made that just because I thought it was funny looking. And so if I find somebody to give that to you. This is the one I had problems with. I got it out of this book, and I've had that for a couple of years. But I'm going to make a suggestion if you ever decide to do this. And it says, make this out of maple, or make this out of oak. You go buy some maple or oak. Because I made that out of pine, knowing I was supposed to make it out of maple, and pine is too soft. So I had to glue the wood together and everything else. And so it's got pine cones, so nobody sees how bad I made it. <laughs> but I do use it. I decorate in the fall. I decorate pine cones in the summer. I put little round of birds in there and flowers. And yeah. I hide all the mistakes I made. <laughs> but it was one of my first things, and I just didn't want to be bad. <laughs> inlays, which is two pieces of wood. You cut out a little design on both of them. You take one of them, and you stick it in what's missing in the other one, and it's an inlay. And that's what we've got in the box and in keychain. You know, they're both inlays. And they're very easy to do, as long as the woods are too thick. Um, anything past, I would say, an inch and a half on a scroll saw, you probably need to start with a thing and saw, which is, is the 
next step, step up, but it's a lot more powerful, a lot more dangerous. I would use all that safety stuff. Um, it has one blade, and it's a big blade. It has a lot more power to it, and it, you can't just do, do a little hole and stick that little pin in there and go around the middle of something. You have to cut and then you have to glue. How did you get started doing that? I got interested about 15 years ago when I was teaching special ed to make, I actually taught North County Christian, I taught arts and class, uh, arts and crafts for a year and a half at North County Christian in Ferguson. And um, so I got interested then I, I got the machine and we could do a few things on it then. But then I got into really, I got a real class in, in special ed. Kind of got away from it. I used it occasionally with my students. But basically I got interested in after I retired. Is it still sitting down there? And I haven't got a lot of money, and Christmas is coming, so I'm going to make some gifts. That's, so that's when I started yeah, doing it. Great. So I've made a whole lot more than I'm displaying. That's why I've got some things I didn't make because I've given most of them away. I sold them. And I sold them but through charities. I just give them to charity. I don't really sell them. <laughs> okay, um, we only have a few minutes left, so I want the puzzles turned in with your names on them so I know who won. I'll choose one that I think is the best because I was going to let you do it, but that's time consuming, so I think I'm smart enough to figure out which one would be the best one to make. And if your name's on it and you come to the Christmas party, you will get it back in the form that you drew it. Okay? And I think I get everything that's important. Does anybody have any questions about it? I mean, I got a whole sheet. That's There's all one. kinds of things you can make out of it. If you can, if it's in paper or plastic, you can make it out of it. <laughs> my bird. If you uh, want to get into it, you can get online and get it. Watch people do it. They'll, they'll make something. They'll show you all the techniques, like tape stuff up, tape. Those needles love tape. Uh, the different needles I get at Lowe's because they have no little pin in them. And it's the only one I could find that doesn't have a pin. Some of them have a little tiny pin at the top, and you have to put that little pin into your machine on the top. And way at the bottom, you can't really see it under the table. And um, I just get the simple ones that just go straight in and straight out. And they they all, I was told that they work better anyway, because they have all give to them. Uh, the table tilts, if you have a pattern that says tilted at three, uh, five degrees, you just, there's a little knob in front of those scroll shells, you just, It'll tell you where three degrees is and you lock it up and you can do that and that's really good for making bowls, things like that, like this bowl I made up here. You have to tilt it a little bit so the wood kind of goes like that. You have a bowl. So that's what the, um, the angle, changing the angle is for. So it says to change the angle, change the angle. It's real, it's real easy to do at so school so, okay? Um, I think I get everything. So well, let's give a, a huge time. round of applause to Diane. Thank you, Diane. Focused in North St. Louis County, Northside Art Association is a nonprofit 501c3 arts organization that serves local artists through community exposure, networking, education, and peer interaction. Learn more about Northside Art Association at www.northsideartassociation.org.